Who would like to know who the most broken champions are going to be for patch 13.1? What's going on game weepers? This is Eeks and in today's video we're going to be discussing those champions and I'm going to give you the rune pages, the summoner spells, the skill order, the items you have to build. Might even give you a tip or two depending on how much I like or dislike the champion. So make sure you stay tuned guys for all of the 10 champions and if you do want to master any of these picks, top lane itself or any other champion or role in the game, check out the game weep website link down below in the description and comment section our challenger players and coaches you know the drill we are uploading daily videos for our subscribers they might be champion courses guides high level on analysis everything you need to peak on the rift and become the best player you can be we have it on our website at gameleap.com so check out those links and let's get into the top 10 champions for the top lane in 13.1 now coming in at number 10 is a champion who got pulled from the 13.1 patch this is mordekaiser i'm sure you guys if you're playing in anything lower than master you know that this champion is a real pain in the you know what with his reliable skills to land and because of his w he's pretty difficult to trade into now of course if you do you have your monitor turned on and you've been playing against Mordekaisers for a while, you will know that he's pretty easy to kite if you're playing champions with mobility. That's why in higher elos, his win rates are a lot lower. And also next patch's win rates, generally speaking, will go down because of the Jack Show nurse. So Jack Show is going to proc more of your bonus resistances, right? So because Mordekaiser, you're not really building any actual tank items, you're building AP and HP. That's why you're getting Rylized, Demonic later in a game. So I think the actual build for Mordekaiser in 13.1 will be with Rift Maker. So that's what I've recommended here. And you can still see even in this patch, turn 1223, Riftmaker still performs very, very well. So for those of you playing Mordekaiser at the moment, no reason to stop playing him in 13.1. Just probably make sure you ban Fiora. Now coming in at number nine, a champion who's really kind of like flying under the radar, but I don't think should be, especially next patch. This is Zac. And the great thing about and the great thing about playing Zac top, you can see these stats are in Challenger. You have so much kill pressure because of your amazing setup, especially when your jungler's top, but also your actual damage stacking. And I think next patch with the new Jack show, because like I just said for Mordekaiser, right, it's going to be working off your bonus resistances. So Zac, once you get Sunfire Rages, whatever items you get afterwards, like Thorn Mails, Jack show just becomes more worth for these tanky champions. Now, of course, you can still go what it's recommending here, right? Radiant Virtue. This makes your level six threat legit. It's also amazing for team fights, right? Which is what you're really picking Zach for. So you have a bunch of options. Just make sure you're taking Revitalize because this works for your passive. And maybe we have to factor in here that Tenacity is getting nerfed so you won't be as mobile. But honestly, it should be insignificant. So try out Zach top guys in your games. Again, just be careful of those champions who love playing against tanks. Now coming in at number eight, speaking about one of those champions who likes playing against tanks, this is Wu. Wukong. And Wukong with Divine Sundra and Ravenous Hydra. This champion does very well top lane, even though he's not really picked that much. So with a pick rate of only 1.3%, we do have to be a little bit careful of including him in this countdown. The next patch, because Jack Show is getting nerfed, right? Lots of other fighters and bruisers are going to get indirectly nerfed as a result and just become like worse. So Wukong as a result kind of like goes up in the pecking order. And because yes, Divine Sundra, Ravenous Hydra, these aren't getting hit, they will be even better. Also, I think tanks will come back a lot more with the new Jack Show. So we're talking champions like Zack, Sejuani, etc., Scion, and he's getting buffed as well. So any Divine Sundra champion is really going to appreciate this. Also, Wukong is here because of the Jace buffs. So if you guys have been paying attention to our recent videos, you will know that we have talked about the Jace buffs in detail. The base attack damage buff, the damage buffs for your melee Q and your melee W. These are actually huge. Now, Wukong does incredibly well into Jace because you have amazing gap closing potential. So you can close that space. And also because of your passive, right, makes you tankier the more you fight. So the more armor you get, it's very hard for Jace to actually win a brawl against a Wukong, even if you don't all in it. So Wukong is on this list at number eight. Now coming in at number seven, exactly like Wukong, this is Camille. So with Divine Sundra and Ravenous Hydra, these champions are just going to froth 13.1. Also because these items aren't getting nerfed, unlike Jack Show, Camille is one of those fighters who is just going to be better off than most of the other fighters. And Camille at the moment is just performing very well. You can look at these stats in Platinum and above in over 180,000 matches to have close to a 51% win rate Honestly, you should put her as an S plus tier champion. Just make sure, guys, when you are playing Camille in the top lane, your E, your hook shot, is really going to make or break the laning phase. And also try to remember that your level one, especially if you take something like Conqueror as your keystone, is really good. Especially if you start Q or even your E, because you stack Conqueror kind of quickly, and you also have your passive, right, which is going to negate a lot of damage the enemy champions throw at you. 
Now, you still have to be a little bit careful about very strong early game champions like Darius and Olaf and face shaking these, but for the most part, you do well. So you can even get advantages out of lane just from this. So try to be aware of that in your games. Just make sure you're taking second wind into matchups that are more poke based and bone plating into matchups where there's going to be quick trading and a bit of burst damage. So Camille comes in at number seven. Now, beating her to the number six position, this is a champion lots of people I just think are getting wrong. So when you play set, right, you can see in all ranks here, there's close to, well, two million matches, which is kind of insane. And for said to have close to a 51% win rate, well, most of these are going to be in silver and maybe gold around that elo, but it might not be like that representative of how OP a champion is, right? Like if we go to higher elos, for example, set's win rate, even in challenger at the moment, is not even like 46%. So why is this? Why is set kind of struggling, but all of a sudden he's on like a top 10 champions countdown? Well, the reason for this is because lots of you are actually just missing out on some tech at the moment. Now you still can go flash and ignite right on set, but honestly, the much better option is to go flash and ghost. And I'm going to show you some statistics here from high reloads. So you can see that across all ranks in a million matches or just over a 51.35% win rate with Flash and Ignite. But remember, this is going to be against bronze and silver players. So if you think Flash and Ignite will work in that elo, anything will. Trust me. Now, if we go to high reloads, the only way set can really work at the moment is by taking Flash and Ghost. So look at this for me in Master and Above. With Flash and Ignite, which is what most people are taking right in lower elos, even in Master and Above, this is what most people are taking. He has a sub 48% win rate. But then when we go to Flash and Ghost, he has over a 51%, and that's in over 220 games. Now, if we change this to Challenger, watch how it changes even more. If we look at Flash and Ignite again, a sub 45% win rate. And then if we look at Flash and Ghost, close to a 60% win rate. Now, of course, there's less games, but this is way too big. This means something. So guys, if you are going to play set, please take Flash and Ghost. And just maybe one other thing as well, because you are a Blade of the Rune King champion. Again, I think tanks are really going to come back because of Jack Show. You will love it, right? Because you shred them so easily with the on hit, with the attack speed, the drain from Blade of the Rune King. And also with set going hard still, this is just a broken setup because of all the HP you get from hard still. And then when you pair this with a Titanic Hydra and the passive from that, because the bonus HP you get translates into bonus AD. So try this out on set guys, but just make sure you have Flash and Ghost as your summoner spells. Now moving into the top five, Coming in at number 5 is a champion who's getting 2 nerfs in 13.1, Fiora. Now for those of you who play Fiora, you know that the reason this champion is just unbelievably broken is because of Grasp, right? And getting a Sheen and then Divine Sundra. So even though Ryder nerfing your vitals damage in the late game, right? It's scaling less off your bonus AD. And even if they're nerfing the AD ratio in your Q, honestly like for the laning phase it doesn't really mean that much and in the late game you're going to be a beast anyway. Especially with Divine Sundra, your vitals will still deal like really good damage, so there's not really much to worry about. This might affect her win rate by a little bit, but she'll still be a top tier top laner. You can see these stats at the moment in Platinum and above, S plus tier, 51.5% win rate, and that's really because of Grass the Undying. So if you're playing against Fiora, make sure you take this, and it's pretty much bulletproof. You legit cannot lose lane. A bit like Set, you can take Flashing Knight, which still does well, but you can also take stuff like Ghost and TP, or maybe even Ghost and Ignite, if you feel like you don't need Flash. In fact, in higher reloads, Ghost and TP is probably the preferable setup because Ghost allows you to stick to pretty much anyone. So if you look at the toughest matchups for Fiora here, you can see there's Akshan, there's also Vayne, there's also Rengar, champions who can kite you out. But with Ghost, they can't cut you out. You have legit kill pressure with this summoner spell. So think about that in your games, guys. The summoner spell is set up for Fiora, but she is number five despite getting nerfed. She'll still be good. Now, moving on to number four, a champion who, honestly, the more I talk about Jack Show, I should probably put him even higher on this countdown, but this is Orn. So he's going to be, guys, the best tank in 13.1. Yes, because of the Jack Show changes. So even though it might be costing a bit more gold, it's just the fact that it's procking, right? The passive anyway, off your bonus resistance is more. And because Orn, you will just be building resistances, Sunfire, Thormel, Force of Nature, Gargles, etc, etc, Jack Show is going to be so powerful. Even at the moment, this item you can see in over 5,000 matches and Platinum and above has a 56% win rate when you actually rush Jack Show. This is not going to change next patch, so I think the current setup for Orn, don't change anything, it's going to be profoundly better for the next couple of weeks. Just be a little bit careful, guys, about blind picking Orn, because you do have some super tough matchups, whether it's Fiora, whether it's Camille, who will just outscale you in a game, Elawi is impossible to beat, Darius is very difficult. You get what I'm saying, right? You don't have 20 bands. So do be a little bit careful of blind picking him. But he is number four. Now, moving into the top three, and if you are finding these videos useful, guys, where we talk about the builds, the items, and I give you some stats, please leave a like down below and let us know in the comment section. And yes, number three, this is Jax. Now, there's kind of a theme here, right? Because Jax, what items does he build? Divine Sundra, Camille Wukong, Blade of the Rune King, Set. These items, his tanks are going to be better, are going to have a lot of value 
in 13.1. Now, Jax as well, a bit like Fiora, Grass of the Undying. Yes, you can take Lethal Tempo, of course, but Grass of the Undying with Jax makes your short trades just so difficult to play against. Like, honestly, I don't know if you guys have played against the Jax with this, but when he goes in and counter strikes you and stuns you, he just walks out with the Grass proc, and it's just like you instantly lose the trade. Unless the Jax really trolls, or he's like in an impossible matchup. Maybe he's against like a Gragas, because when you jump in, Gragas can just body slam you. Or maybe against Sejuani, same thing. Poppy would be the same thing, right, because of her W. So there are a couple of matchups that are probably unplayable, especially because these champions can rush Frozen Heart. They'll really cuck you when you get Blade of the Rune King. So we do have to be a little bit careful still about blind picking Jax. But regardless, guys, W Max, Grass the Undying, Divine Sundra, Blade of the Rune King. Way too much going for this champion. He's number three. Now, number two on the countdown. So some people in the comments, right, to our tier list video, because I put this champion in broken tier, they were like, how is Jace going to be broken? Guys, I don't know how long you've been playing League for, but if you just look at these changes, they are huge. Your base AD is going up by three. Your melee damage on your W is going up by 10, just the tick damage. So even if you start W, right, and you just run at an enemy champ in an auto attack them, and remember your range W, because of the attack speed you get, if you're running Conqueror especially, you could be one of the strongest level one champions in the top lane. Just face check someone now, and you will probably win the all in. And also your melee Q is getting an extra 35 damage at level five or level nine, rank five, five points in your Q. That is not fair. Like legit, I know Jace might not be like the best champion to play in solo, Q because he's very difficult, right? You have to play perfectly. But let's be real. If you are good at this champion, there is no way you should be losing lane if these are the actual buffs that go through. And if you do want to learn Jace, guys, I think you should definitely have him in your champion pool. He's an excellent blind pick top laner as well. He doesn't really have many like hard matchups because if you can play this champion well, you can probably win any matchup. So again, check out our website for all our videos that will help you to learn Jace and play him at the highest level. So those buffs have made Jace number two. But the number one champion, guys, for top lane, well, he hasn't really like not been on a countdown video for god knows how long now it's probably been like a year this is darius so number one flashing ghost conqueror W being on a five second cooldown, the hemorrhage stacking, versing tankier champions in the top lane in 13.1, you crush them during the laning phase, it's too difficult. Trinity Force, Stride Breaker, doesn't really matter what one you go, maybe Trinity Force if you're snowballing, and of course you can go Stride Breaker if you're against a lot of kite or ranged champions, so you can stick to them more. But do we really have to talk about this champion that much? Maybe Wukong, okay, that might be another reason why I put Wukong on this countdown, is a counter, so you might have to be a little bit careful of him, but honestly guys, this champion is just insane. For those of you who have been playing top lane at the moment, whenever you see a Darius, you might even ban him. You can see he's banned in over 20% of games and platinum and above. You know how obnoxious this champion can be. So Darius, number one for 13.1. Guys, let me know any thoughts, any champions you think should have been included. Let us know in the comment section. And until our next season 13 upload, where I'll probably talk about the top 10 mid laners, this has been a space.